Now that you've had a chance to practice some of the basic rules, we're going to expand upon that and look at some more rules that surround probability and certain situations that may occur. Let's do a quick summary, though, of all the basic ideas of probability that we've looked at so far. Number one, we looked at the formula uh, for the probability of any event, and we found that we can find the probability of any event by figuring out how many ways our event can occur divided by how many outcomes are actually possible, so how many outcomes are in our sample space. We also saw that the probability of any event is never negative, never greater than 1, so never less than 0%, and never greater than 100%. The probability that any outcome will come from my sample space is 100%. P of S is equal to 1, and the probability that it would come from outside of my sample space is 0. Also, we looked at the complement rule, which said that any event can actually be found by finding the probability of its complement, and then subtracting that probability from 1. In other words, the probability of any event is 1 minus the probability that our event does not occur. And for two disjoint events, meaning they cannot occur at the same time, the probability that either E or F will occur is equal to 1 minus, I'm sorry, the probability that either E or F occurs is the probability of E plus the probability of F. We defined disjoint events as well. Two events are disjoint if they do not have any overlapping outcomes. In the, in the example that we looked at, we looked at the probability that we would pick either a queen or a nine. It's impossible to pick, with just one pick of a uh, one card from a deck, to pick a queen of nines. There is no queen of nines card. And so we can never satisfy these two events with a single trial. So we say they're disjoint. If they do share outcomes and they are not disjoint, then they overlap. For an example, we saw picking a, a single card from a deck. What's the probability that it was a king or it was a heart? The king of hearts means that we satisfied both events at the same time. The general addition rule kind of goes like this. Um, <coughs> for two disjoint events, E and F, the probability that either E or F occurs is equal to the sum of their probabilities. For all other events where there are overlapping outcomes, meaning they are not disjoint, we have to throw this little extra part here at the end, the probability of E and F occurring at the same time, meaning that we pick both a king and a heart. Well, that can only happen once, as we saw in the previous uh, presentation. So the second formula actually is our general addition rule for probability. <coughs> uh, because the, if two events are disjoint, the probability that they would happen at the same time is zero. It's impossible. And so we'd be subtracting zero here. So really, this rule here is our general addition rule for probability. Because it could be used in situations where they overlap and in situations where they don't overlap. Because the probability, if they are disjoint, so they're not overlapping, the probability that they would both occur at the same time is actually zero. <coughs> now we're going to add to our tool, uh, our sort of our tool, bet, tool belt of uh, stuff we have to solve probability scenarios, is what's called the multiplication rule for probability. This rule comes into play where we have one event followed by another. So we're doing one thing and then we're repeating that uh, with another action, another uh, probability trial or experiment. In this situation, we need to be concerned about independent events, whether the first uh, event that we perform affects the second event. If the first event that we perform and its outcome does not affect the probability of the second event, we say we have independent events. This multiplication rule applies, for example, in situations where we're drawing 
multiple cards from a deck of cards. So we're not just drawing one card, we're drawing a card, and then we're following it up by drawing a second card. <coughs> if we draw a card from a deck of cards, and then we replace that card that we've drawn before we make the second draw, then uh, we have two events that are independent, because we're not changing uh, the number of cards that are in the deck. Let's skip to that little part here. This doesn't really apply to what we're talking about right now. We say two events, or two trials, are dependent if the first trial changes the probability of the second trial. This would be the case if we draw a card from a deck of cards and then we do not replace it after we've picked it. Now that we've withdrawn one of the cards from my deck, there are fewer outcomes possible in my sample space, and that changes the probability. And so I have a different probability for my second event. For two independent events, E and F, the probability that E is followed by F, meaning uh, event E occurs, and then on the second uh, trial, event F occurs, is the probability that we have E followed by F is equal to the product of their individual probabilities. The key word here is independent events, meaning one occurs and then another occurs, so they are separate. For example, let's say we are choosing two cards from a standard deck, but we are replacing them as we draw. So what is the probability of choosing a king and then choosing a 10? Notice that it has to occur in that order. This is an important idea. So <coughs> the probability that we would choose a king and then we would pick a 10 is equal to the probability of a king times the probability of getting a 10. Well, the probability of getting a king is 4 out of 52, and of course there's also four tens. We're replacing them as we go, and so if we multiply their probabilities, that's the probability that we would get a king on the first draw and a 10 on the second draw. I want to point out here that uh, what we just found here, this 0.6%, is the probability of this specific uh, order of events occurring in the order that they're presented. So this 0.6% is not the probability that after two draws from a deck of cards, we would get both a king, uh, a king and a 10, just as a result, uh, because this is only representing the probability that we would get a king on the first draw specifically, and then a 10 on the second draw specifically as well. Let's look at our blood type example. Here we have laid out for us uh, the blood type of our general population and what uh, percent of the population has that blood type. So if we select two people simultaneously and at random from all people in the United States, if we wanted to know what's the probability that they both have type O blood, it isn't just equal to the probability of the general population of 44%. We're going to define O2 here as uh, person 2 has type blood, type O blood, and O1 be that person 1 has type O blood. So the probability that the first person has type O and the second person has type O is equal to the product of <coughs> their two probabilities. So the actual probability that we would pick two people at random uh, that have type O blood is equal to 19.36%. For two dependent events, E and F, this means that the first event affected the probability of the second event. So the way we interpret this is, uh, the second part here with this line with the E, this line reads as a given. Uh, so the way we read this is the probability of F given that E has occurred, meaning we take the uh, we take event E as a given and that it occurred and we recalculate the probability of F. <coughs> 
So if we're doing an experiment and we're picking two cards again from a deck of cards, and we want to know what's the probability that we pick two face cards, assuming that we are not replacing them as we draw them. We can write this out in probability notation as probability of getting a face card and then probability of getting a face card again on the second draw. Because we're not replacing them, we would say the probability that we first pick a face card times the probability that we get a second face card if we assume that we've already drawn one face card. So this just means given that the first event occurred. That basically means we just have to adjust the second one. Now that we have picked a face card and we're not replacing it, there's only 11 face cards left in our deck of cards, and there's only a total now of 51 cards in our deck of cards. So this gives me a probability of 132 out of 2,652, or 5%. Uh, after one card was drawn, there were only 11 more possible successes out of 51 total possibilities. So, some things to remember. We've, we've introduced two really important vocab words here. Disjoint, which applies when we're looking to multiple ways we can be successful from a single trial. And we also introduced the idea of independence. These things are not the same. Disjoint applies when we're looking at outcomes from a single trial. When we have to worry about independence is when we have outcomes from trials one following each other. So we have multiple trials occurring. So we're not just rolling a dice one time, we're rolling it twice. Or uh, we're not just picking one card from a deck of cards or we would have to worry about disjointedness. Uh, independence applies when we have, uh, we're picking two cards from a deck of cards. So example, when we're talking about uh, disjoint or independence, if we were going to the fridge and we were going to pick either a diet soda or a water from the fridge, would that be an example where we would consider disjointedness or independence? And the answer to that is that we would be con uh, concerned about disjointedness. <coughs> These uh, two events are disjoint. We can either do one or the other, but if we're only picking one thing out of the fridge, we're not going to pick them both at the same time. There's the separate items. These are disjoint events. Uh, at a restaurant, if Dennis orders a steak and Lois orders a salad, we consider those two events independent events. Dennis orders first, Lois orders second, and we assume that the two orders have nothing to do with each other. They're independent of each other. This concludes uh, part two of module six.